Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a quick step back. So what we have here is this is a, an, an Access desktop database. And we may want, this is the kind of database that people are currently using that you may want to move to the web. And so some of the things that you can do with this, again, right now these are all local tables. But if we moved this into um, an Access web app, basically, kind of um, can upsizing it, almost kind of like upsizing it to SharePoint, what that does is it basically takes these tables and moves, moves them to a, a SQL uh, background. So it's, it's in a SQL Azure um, tables out in the cloud that you can access from here. So the cool thing is that once, once that happens and you reconnect these uh, through um, ODBC, basically it, these uh, become SharePoint lists, basically, uh, because they're, they're in SQL Azure, you can actually take this access uh, database onto your laptop, and it doesn't matter if you're working from within your organization or you're on the road, as long as you have that access database on your laptop, you can access the same data in the cloud, whether you're here or you're out of the country or whatever, because those, um, those uh, tables then, so with, with the data then in the cloud, you can, you can still use your, your current access database, your desktop database, but you're connecting to those tables out in the cloud. And so one of the, one of the things that we've done recently is we created a, um, an Access Days Cruise app. Um, if you're familiar, we're, uh, we're, um, we, there's an Access Day con Days conference that's coming up in uh, January of next year. What's going on with that? So this is the Access Days Caribbean Cruise that we're putting on um, uh, in, in January of next year. There, we actually have a deadline of, of uh, May 10th to, to sign up for it. But this is the, this is the kind of, um, we, we wanted to be able to provide some of the information that's within this to people that uh, are using a mobile device or they're using an Access web app um, to, to look at that information. So what we ended up doing is we took the sponsors and the speakers and the frequently asked questions and we built that into an Access web app and then above and beyond that we um, turned, we took that and we connected, took, um, we created an Android uh, app and an, um, a Windows Phone app and soon to be released an iOS app that we, that we can connect to the data of this um, Access Web App uh, back end. So that's, that's kind of what we're doing uh, with that. Okay, you should, be, you should be able to see Access again. In here you see that these are local tables and query, you'll see queries and forms. And if we want to move this over to SharePoint, what, um, what we need to do is uh, just go over and choose Move Data to SharePoint. And it will ask us, where do we want to move this SharePoint site, basically? What, what SharePoint site do we want to use? So I'm going to choose this one. It's, it's where we put the cruise information. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and choose Next. And then what it will do is it will connect to that um, database in the cloud, and it will move the, uh, the data side over to uh, basically SharePoint lists which again are, are in SQL Azure. So hopefully this will log in fine. I've, I've had a couple cases when I've done this where um, uh, one of the issues that I, that I run into is I use different logins for different things. So sometimes I'll be logged in uh, on our customer's SharePoint site. Sometimes I'm logged in to um, the Waterfall Count site. And if I'm not logged in as the right person, I don't have the rights to, to store uh, the tables out there um, the right way. So it can be a, a little bit of a concern. But this is kind of a, just kind of a quick and easy way to get your, to get it kind of moved out there. So I'm going to, while, while this is going, does anybody have any um, questions that they want to um, post into the chat window?
Um, and so a uh, question popped up, um, is this creating an uh, Azure SQL Server database? Yeah, so um, right, I'm, I'm using an Office 365 connection. So this is creating a, a, a SQL Azure uh, database uh, through SharePoint. Um, does the VBA code transfer over into SharePoint? No, it does not. Um, one of the when when you're working with uh, an access web app, um, the the web app itself, the, the desktop app uses VBA, but if your yes uh, SharePoint list is is Azure, um, so in in 2013, so when um, when you when you when you create an access web app. An Access Web App can only utilize macros in order to perform its function. There's no VBA in an Access Web App. So you're a little bit limited, well, a lot limited with that functionality. You're kind of stuck with, with the macro system that, they, that they've given you. And they're going to keep expanding on the macro language, but it's, it's very limited over what we can do with uh, VBA. So what we have in, in this situation of, of the database that we're doing right now, we're moving the tables over to SharePoint um, to as, as kind of a SharePoint list, which, which is really a, an Azure database. A, a, a list is kind of a, a table within SharePoint. It's a SQL Azure uh, table. That's one of the changes they made. Um, and so the data will be in, in SQL, uh, and then, but all of your forms, queries, VBA that you used before, you can still run with your local access database. Um, so you can just run run your your your, um, your desktop app, and you know, but you've got SQL in the cloud. So it's it's a, there's a it's kind of a really uh, cheap uh, way to move into the SQL environment if you haven't done a lot of SQL um, stuff in the in the past. Uh, because you, it's automatically creating your SQL database for you. So some of the pluses about doing that is that you you can um, with with Access Desktop you're limited to um, a one gig table size and a two gig database size. Um, and so w obviously with SQL you can go way way beyond that, um, and you, so you can store any any images that you want into your into your SQL database because you don't have those kind of limitations. And yes, there are ways around that uh, with local access databases where um, if you have, you know, a four gig database, but you've got like, you know, um, 700 meg in each of the four tables, you can split those out into separate, you know, databases if you really wanted to and reattach those. And so you can do things like that. But this is just a kind of a quick and easy way of doing it. One one thing I do want to point out, which is kind of, one of the things I liked about Access 2010 versus Access 2013 web apps, is that with Access 2010 web apps, they made the assumption that people are going to use both desktop apps and web apps. And so what would happen is if you were in the browser environment, it would uh, you would be using the web app side, um, but if you uh, if you had a database like this, it stored all of the the VBA forms and um, all of that in the in the into the SharePoint um, app the, the the web app basically, so that if you connected to it from another desktop machine that had access, it would actually download all of the VBA portions and that kind of stuff, so um, it, it kind of housed it for you. Whereas in this case, if I wanted to take this database and give it to Joe or give it to Jack or Judy um, to, to utilize this, I would give them the front end and that front end would connect to those SQL Azure tables in the cloud. And so now it's, it's done, since your tables have been uh, successfully shared, I'm going to choose finish. And what you'll see here now are these are um, these are the tables now stored uh, uh, in in SharePoint. So we, we could now create a, a web app uh, that's that's connected to you know this this information. Um, this I mean 
this is the uh, if any of you have heard like Kevin um, Bell speak recently, this is kind of what his direction has been with Access Web Apps. He doesn't do a lot with Access Web Apps itself, but what he utilizes is kind of this feature set where he's moving the data into the cloud uh, with SQL Azure, but he's keeping everything uh, for the most part as a you know a, a, as a standard Access desktop database. So if more than one people use it, you can give them the runtime version of Access and allow them to do it this way, uh, to have the full feature set of, of, um, of Access. And then uh, it would, um, it, you know, for if, if you want to give people some of the Access Web App functionality, then you, um, you, could, you could basically build the, the web forms on top of it. Um, so yes, the relationships uh, are intact uh, with these, uh, and let's take a look. I'm going to go into, let's see, let's see if we can go into Design Viewed and see if it says yes here. Um, so this should, yeah, it's got a lot of stuff going on, but uh, it, the, the relationships of these tables are, are still out there, um, even though we've switched these over to, to that. Um, Joe's asking, is there a cost associated with Access Runtime? No, you can, you can uh, give Access Runtime for free uh, to anybody. Generally, what I'll do within an organization with the, from the Access desktop side is the, the people that are utilizing um, Access for designing their own reports or if they need to add fields to tables and those kind of things, most of the time I'll just say, okay, those people can buy Access, but people you know, um, we had a case today where we had a volunteer uh, food pantry out in Detroit uh, where mostly volunteers use the system and it is an Access desktop database. And I'm like, you know, on those computers, you know, they don't need to have a full copy of Access so you can give them a free copy of runtime. Um, from Charles, will the distributed front ends uh, have a problem making the internet connection? Um, I've I've not had a problem, but you have, but you do have to make sure that you're you you have uh, the right credentials for that. Um, so, yeah, I I I haven't done a lot of this kind of stuff, but I can see uh, definitely from from Kevin's side how this can be uh, helpful, especially for people that they have an existing access database, they they want to make it um, accessible for other people. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's, it's kind of a, a, an easy way to get the data in the cloud as well as, um, um, you know, making it SQL. Yeah, the credentials of creators, I'm, I believe that you still handle the rights of the tables through SharePoint. I, I, I don't have experience with that, so if, if, if others do, uh, maybe they can uh, um, say that to uh, mention that to Charles. And I hear somebody's somebody's got their mic on or something. If if you have your if you have your um, mic on, if you could mute that because I'm getting a little bit of a uh, feedback from someone. I'm not sure who. Okay. Um, all right. Good. So so that's kind of how that's kind of how that one works. I'm not, I don't need to save. Uh, the layout of relationships, but you get a, kind of a general idea. This, uh, like I said, this is kind of a, a nice little way of taking your database and moving it to the cloud to allow people to, to have access um, to these tables. And uh, so, so that's kind of how that one works. So, the, so that's one way of, uh, of doing this. Another way, and, and the way that I've, I've uh, done a lot of my web apps, is that you can you can create a um, a web app from scratch either as a custom web app or by utilizing templates which are stored in in the system. So there you know there's there's a lot of templates that come with. So if I wanted to to build a a web app using a template, uh, I could just choose one of these templates and choose what I want to call it and. Hold on a second. I'm having to log into 
Office 365 on another screen. Yeah, so while I'm doing this, if others, you know what I'll do is I will open up, um, I'm going to unmute everybody, and if you want to ask a couple questions while I'm doing this, I'm going to open up the mic for people. So if anybody has any questions that you want to put in the chat window or you want, um, I've, I've unmuted most of you here, so you can do this. I just need to uh, log in to my uh, SharePoint. Cause, so Joe says, does anybody use Access in Phoenix? All right, good. So we've got some replies there. Um, uh, uh, Tom does and Steve does. All right, cool. I'm trying to think. I, I'm not sure if there's an Access user group um, in Arizona right now, but that would be um, that would be really cool to 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 have. Yeah, this is the one thing that I that I don't like about having um, uh, multiple logins. Because uh, again, if you're not logged in as the right person when you go and do things, uh, it can be really be a mess here because uh, you're. Um, when you when you log into Access, you're logged in as a uh, as a uh, certain login, um, and so um, Access itself, if you're not logged in, you'll get some weird weird results. So good. So I'm I'm in, and so what this um, uh, Steve says he's working with Tom to build an agency database. That's cool. Um, and I see is Access Web App similar to splitting a database? Well, what kind of yeah? What we just did was we took an Access database and we we split it from the front end to uh, having um, SQL Azure tables as the back end. So that does split the database in, into two things. With a web app, um, in in actuality, the with, with a web app, if you design a web app like what we're doing here, it it is it's stored in the same database. But um, the um, w yeah, in in fact, here we we see that these are these are the tables. And again, I this is a a brand new web app database that I created from scratch that that shows us uh, the. These are the the tables that were created, and you can see the little picture of a globe, meaning that um, it's a it's a web app uh, with a uh, SQL Azure backend, and then it automatically created these forms for us. It creates um, these forms, uh, data sheets, and list views uh, for each of the different tables that we have. And hold tight, I'm um, I'm gonna. Mute again, just because I'm getting some feedback a little bit again. So I apologize for that. So again, and uh, so if you have questions, go ahead and uh, jump in the chat window again. So uh, in here, what what we did is we created a web app database from scratch using a uh, a template um, that uh, it using a an Access web app template. Uh, to build our database. There's a lot of really, really good templates out there uh, to, to check out. Um, but I, I just want to, uh, but it, so this is really good for you to experiment with. Um, so what, what it does is it builds the tables as well as the forms, which they call uh, views, uh, different views. And what you'll see is for each of the tables, you'll see that there are these sections in here and then you've got the a list data sheet, and then sometimes they'll have by group or by status or things like that. So, to if we were to modify any of this, we could click on edit, and this is kind of like editing a form. You know, you can you can grab fields and move them move them around. Um, there, and we're not going to get into all this, but. Um, you can see with, with uh, web apps, it actually you can't have over, overlapping controls, so it makes room uh, for those as uh, as you're working with them. So if if you have, um, you, you we can still move these over and we can expand these, but if we were to make this tall, it's going to move push the other ones down. So you can kind of see that. Um, 
And so the 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 nice thing about this is that it it gives you, like I said, a, a strong template to work with. It automatically creates uh, your your table structure for you. Automatically creates your forms and. Uh, if I want to now view this as in a web app, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to um, share this as soon as it uh, pops up into my other screen. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, Launch App. And I need to um, hold tight because it's going to flip over to my other screen again. Uh, and we should be back. Okay. And so this is what the web app looks like. Now you can see um, I'm in Chrome um, and I've got uh, in here, I've got my projects and employees and customers and tasks. And the way it looked here is very similar to the way it looked in Access. So you've got um, the uh, there, it's very it's very minimalist. Um, it creates your your um, text fields for you. Uh, you've got it automatically builds your drop down menus, uh, you know, for you if you've got information like that. Um, so it's kind of a quick down and dirty way of um, of, of building a web app. So what and the the reason why I'm, I want I want to kind of point this out is. Uh, this is kind of the second way of doing it, where you you either you can either use a template or use a blank um, uh, site uh, web app, basically a blank web app where you add all your own blank uh, tables um, and you um, and you create it the way you want to to fit your specific needs. Uh, for instance, the um, the um, client that I visited yesterday. Like I said, they're they're a large uh, chain of um, you know grocery stores, and with with them, there's not really a template that could fit their specific purposes uh, because they're they're tracking things that are only in their in their world uh, in, in the grocery store world of, of things. So there's not really a template that you can use to start from, but uh, you know. A lot of times you can just grab like the employees table and add that or the customers or clients table and add that. And so it, it can build um, a lot of that portion for you. Um, and uh, again, the kind of the nice thing about this is that you can uh, take, uh, because of the way it's built, and again, I'm going to switch, I'm going to switch back over to um, Axis again here. Um, Hold on a second. Okay. Uh, so you should be able to see access again. Um, and so with, with um, so so within this, it um, you know it's kind of quick, down and dirty way of, of of building something. And like I said, one of the cool things that I've that we've done recently with this is that. Because we built a web app from scratch, we can now utilize that web app in uh, in other in other ways. And so, one of the things that I've done is um, I've I've created a um, a web app from scratch. And so that's the next way. Uh, again, uh, this way we use the template. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build just a, a a down and dirty web app from scratch. Um, and then I'll, and I'll show you kind of how we use that in just a second. So I'm just going to do this quickly. But I can do a, um, I can click on File, New. I can create a custom web app. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to call it another Andy. And go ahead and do a Create. And I don't need to save that. And so now what it's going to do is it's going to build a basic blank web app. And the first thing that I'm going to, that I need to do with this is to add tables because it's, it's a blank slate. There, there, there are no tables in it. There's no forms, queries. It's, it's as, as though you're building a, a design, you're designing a desktop database, but 
you, um, you're starting with a blank slate. So generally what I'll do in here is I will, I'll try and start with one, one thing, if at all possible, like a person or um, clients or something that I can, I can do to, um, to add so to save me some time. But if not, we can just click on, you know, new table, or here you can click, click on add a new blank table. Um, it will put you in the in the table, and then, and I'll show you um, here, um, just quickly. If I were doing this from scratch, I'm just going to do uh, first name. Whoops. Uh, last name. I'm not, I'm not going to go crazy with this, but I'm going to take, um, I'm, I'm just going to take this, uh, save it, uh, TBL contacts. And what I want to show you is after it creates uh, this table, this table contacts, uh, I'm going to close this, and what you'll see that it, it automatically builds a list view and a data sheet view. Um, and so for people that, uh, in, in a list view is kind of viewing uh, one record at a time. Uh, it automatically creates a little um, area to, um, uh, to find uh, data. So it's kind of a list of, of the data to select from, a filter, um, and a data sheet is kind of like in, uh, an Excel spreadsheet uh, view. Um, but it, it does those automatically for you uh, so you don't have to build those from, from scratch. And so, by by you doing this, you can kind of build some of the of of the stuff that you need to. It'll it'll, it'll handle, you know, a, for the most part, eighty percent of what most people need. And then you just customize those views to fit your particular needs. One of the things that while I'm while I'm in here, um, and I, I I know I've talked about this before, um, but I, just really quickly for new people, one of the things I really like about this interface is it seems like when, um, I've, I've been programming in Access since 94, uh, so uh, Jack and myself, are, there's a, a bunch of us on here that are old timers. Um, no offense, Jack. <laughs> uh, but wh w uh, what we'll find is a lot of times we'll go on site to a, a client and um, there are different levels of access programming that they've had, whether they, they have um, somebody uh, internal that's developed an access database, or they'll hire a programmer on the outside um, that is, uh, that's something, either they're new to access, but they're unemployed, so they call themselves consultants, or they're, um, you know, they've been in the field for a long time. Everybody has a little bit different way of adding those buttons to, um, to edit, to save, to cancel, to delete. There are, sometimes I'll find that like an exit door in the top right. Sometimes I'll find an exit door in the bottom right or bottom left. It, it, it's, it's all over the place. Sometimes you'll see them on the right-hand side. And the, the nice thing that I like about um, web apps is, yes, it is a very minimalist, and a lot of people don't like that. It's very black, white, gray kind of views, uh, looks. Um, you can add some spot of color, but it's really designed for just basics. Um, but it it um, automatically creates uh, this little option bar up here of add, delete, edit, save, um, and cancel. And it, it consistently puts that in the same place on every form. So, you, so um, there's consistency with every form that you create. So it's kind of a nice way of doing it. Um, and so you can... You can create a, a web app from scratch, and it's very easy for anybody um, to uh, get into this because they can, um, um, you don't have, a, have to have the, the training of uh, the stuff that, you know, a lot of us have done with VBNet to build um, your, your uh, at web apps from scratch. You can, you can just build it quickly. Um, you can save it, uh, and then I, um, we can go back to home. We're going to launch the app, and I need to uh, switch my – hold on back. I'm gonna, I need to uh, go back to uh, Monitor 3 again. Um, and so here's the, here's the quick view um, of that. Um, and, I mean, 
yes, th this is very minimalist, but we did it very, very quick. And so anybody within uh, an organization can build simple databases like this very, very quickly. Um, so it's nice to keep track of inventory. It's, um, it's, uh, it, it really makes um, web apps accessible to a lot more people, um, and you, you can make it e um, easily accessible by many people uh, just by giving them uh, rights or inviting them uh, to this. And so uh, I want to show you one of the things that um, I've done is that I've created, and hold tight, I'm, I'm going to jump into Access for a second. I'm just going to, I'm going to um, pull this up in Access and then I'll put it over there, put it over to the web. So hold tight. Uh, so what I did is this is um, the what I call the um, uh, Access Days Caribbean app that I created. And so what um, what I did is I created a blank web app that has um, table categories, uh, and the ca the categories are things like um, agenda, attendees, frequently asked questions, highlights. So, so these are um, the, um, you know, the different, like, for instance, I can click on uh, speakers. And I can see who the speakers are going to be at the event. Um, I can choose sponsors and see who's, who's sponsoring the event. Um, and so I've got a web app here that, that has uh, that information. I've got uh, topics, which are really the detail. So here I've got frequently asked questions. I've got um, a, a section that people can actually uh, edit. Um, and then as we go down, you'll see that we have the, the ability to add thumbnails. So you can see uh, my lovely face here and Armin and some um, uh, several, several of us that will be at POG. You'll see us there. Um, actually, I know for... I know all of these will be here. I'm not sure if Tim will be there, but I know all of these speakers will be at POG next month. Um, and then we've got different sponsors. So you can see our logos and things like that. So you can, um, you can easily add uh, pictures and, and do things like that. So I've got categories, topics, register, and table events uh, here. Uh, and so what I, did with, what I did with this is I created the web app, and then... I opened it up uh, for, um, we had Alpha uh, Software, if, you're, if you've heard about Alpha Anywhere. Alpha Anywhere is an, um, an app, a software application made by Alpha Software that allows you to, um, it's, it's a rapid application development for Android, iPhone, uh, Windows Phone apps. Although rapid application in the Alpha world versus rap, rapid application in the Access world are totally different things. Um, what I found is that it may take 15 to 20 times longer uh, to build something in alpha, but, but it's still a, uh, a um, it's faster than building a native Android app and a native iOS app and a native Windows Phone app. Um, you can build them all one time and then publish it. And so what we've, what we've done is uh, I built this first and then I gave uh, Alpha the, um, the connection to these tables. And so what, we've, what they've done is I'm going to go ahead and open up um, Google Play here. And if I, um, if I type in um, Access Days 2016, you'll see that here's the um, Access Days app. Um, and so now you can uh, install this Access Days app uh, on your Android device or on your iPhone. Um, actually, I'm not sure if the iPhone is out, but Windows Phone and, and Android are out. So if you go, if you jump out, if you have a Windows Phone or if you go on Android um, and you you search for Access Days 2016, you can find this app and install it. Um, and I was hoping I, I uh, I've got uh, a uh, a Nokia, um, a Windows phone, 
I just switched over to Windows Phone from Android um, about three weeks ago. I actually really like it. Um, it doesn't have all the apps that I want, but it's um, I still like it. Um, I like the interface. Um, and uh, I, I wanted to be able to um, show this on the I'm pointing to my phone. I wanted to be able to show you that on the screen, but I can't do that today. But if you if you want to download Access Days 2016 onto your um, app, uh, in, onto your phone, then you can see that how that uh, information is connected to um, uh, Access Days. Hold on a second. Um, how it's connected to this data. So what you'll see when you open up the app is that you'll see um, the different uh, categories uh, that you can choose from, um, and so you can you can view you can view the categories. Um, and um, I'm going to refresh this real quick. Uh, so you can you can view the categories, um, kind of like what you do do here. You can choose the attendees and frequently asked questions and um, and different things like this. Um, and and you can view all that on your mobile phone. And one of the cool things that we're going to be introducing in the next um, couple weeks is that when you add uh, information to your the, this web app, it will automatically appear on your phone. When you um, uh, add, um, hold on a second. Yep. Okay. I was just checking the the um, the chat real quick. So you you can uh, you can view this information on your phone. So you you'll actually be able to add a question on your phone. And then you can jump into this web app. I'll give access to this. Uh, and then people can view it in the web app. You can add data to the web app and then jump on your phone. You'll see the data show up on your phone. So you'll be able to see how you can quickly um, view that data, whether you're, um, whether you're in a web app or you're in an Android device or an iOS device or if you have a uh, local access database that um, that you can uh, connect to it. So it's um, these are the kind of opportunities that I see that are gonna that people are gonna do more and more of uh, because it, it it just gives you an an easy way to take a database from from for people like me that I have, I have no experience in in developing any kind of web app before access uh, it was just um, you know I don't I didn't want to learn JavaScript I didn't want to learn HTML5 I didn't want to to do all those kind of you know stuff and this gives me the ability to build uh, an uh, a, an app um, quickly that works on the that works in a web browser that that gives people access to it. Um, uh, you know, from different devices, um, and the other kind of cool thing about it is that, one in my experience, when I've uh, worked with some IT people, especially people that they're in the Oracle world or in the SQL, and I I spoke at like eight SQL Saturdays last year, and one of the issues that I, I kind of run up against is I. Um, you know, I would be sitting at a table, and they didn't know I was an access guy um, that I've been that I've been doing access for for twenty odd years. And and you could, there was somebody would bring up access, and they would the people at the table would laugh because they they think that access is they I I envision they think of access how it was back in access 2000 or access 2003 uh, or, or earlier and they're thinking about the limited capabilities that access had at that time and they're not looking at the capabilities of hey look I I just this this access is Caribbean this is a SQL database with, with with a web app front end I don't know of any other uh, software package out there that I can build this kind of uh, yes, it's 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 fairly simplistic, but I don't know of any other way that I could uh, build this this quickly in a matter of minutes. Um, I mean, come on, th think about it. We, we created we created three different databases in less than an hour, and we could have done it in less than 15 minutes if I didn't uh, um, 
wasn't such a loud mouth here. Um, but you know, any anybody can anybody can do this, um, and IT can control the security of it. So you you don't have to worry about you know. A, one of my clients is Post Foods, and they have uh, 70, uh, more than 70 access databases um, on their on their servers. And to me, the, I mean, it was it was an IT logistical nightmare for them to keep track of all of these different access databases. To me, it's like herding cats. You know, how do you keep track of all these different databases? Um, and those were only the ones on the server. Not to mention ones that were on people's hard drives that we didn't know about. And so there's, you know, with, with something like this, because this this is an Access web app, but where is it? If I click on back to site, I'm a, I'm in a SharePoint, I'm in a SharePoint site. This is an Office 365 SharePoint area. And, and, um, and this is something that IT would have control over the rights to grant, grant people rights to uh, edit the database, or um, uh, you can give uh, rights to develop the database, or whatever you want to with it. So you're giving the control back into the hands of of IT people, and I and I think that that's one of the one of the pluses. So on on the downside, um, you know when uh, you know in let's let me go back to um, let me go back to the web app again. This is, I mean, it's a it's a fairly uh, simplistic design, you know. This um, the the um, the macros are, um, yeah. Um, so good, yeah. Good comments in in the chat window. So the there's there's a lot of capabilities here that people can quickly um, utilize. I mean. Where else can you where else can you create a, a a SQL database this quickly that has this kind of security and allows people to <clears throat> handle the rights um, on you know it's just it's it's a very powerful tool um, but you you can't look at Access Web Apps as a replacement for v, uh, for VBA because there's I mean um, there. When, when I built um, my Waterfall Calc app, it, the Waterfall Calc app can do a lot of, of stuff, but it, it took months of creation because instead of being able to write VBA, I had to write everything is done in the macro, in the macro language. And so here, I'm going to jump back over to Access just for another one quick second again. Um, sure. Access. If I... Um, so I'm I'm back in Access. So in here, if I click on Advanced, you see I can do I can create a query, I can create a blank view, list view, data sheet view, which are all forms, um, or I've got these macros. Um, macro, which is a standard macro that we're all used to, a data macro is is kind of like a replacement of a dim RS's record set and looping through record sets. Think of macro like that where you're you're looping through record sets to find a um, a record or you're looping through it to uh, edit data within um, within tables. Um, and you, you've got your on start macro is kind of like an auto exec macro. Um, and so but there's no VBA there's no VBA here. You can't write any VBA. So there's a so for a lot of people they the um, a lot of programs that I've talked to, they're like, okay, this is this is a great tool to begin with and a great intro to to web apps, but uh, there are limitations, and so I just kind of want to point those things out because this is um, this is a powerful tool. I I love the idea of, of taking all you know if a, if a company has um, access databases and they want to move them to the the cloud, uh, so that people can share that data. Um, you know that this is this is a great way of, of of being able to move to SQL and be able to move that data to the cloud, so that they have access to that in other software, um, ODBC and you know uh, connections and things like that. Um, but it can't do everything. So um, don't. Even though some applications are are great for this. Um, don't don't think that this can do everything. 
um, because it can't. Um, the, the other thing I don't like about Access Web Apps is when when I'm viewing, if I'm viewing this in a um, you know on in a browser on my phone. Um, the problem, one of the things I don't like is you've got this gray area here, uh, and I, I apologize, I'm going to switch back over to um, uh, my, um, I'm going to switch back over to my uh, web, web browser again, but this gray area where you see table categories, topics, register events, you know, this is a couple inches, and this, you cannot hide this, and so you, um, that's already taking up uh, that much um, space on your mobile device, um, and so it's you know it's it leaves it leaves a lot to be desired from the mobile phone world, and that's why I uh, personally recommend Alpha Anywhere for um, being able to do your iPhone, Android, um, uh, Windows Phone apps and do it in there now. Um, at least until we have a good solution from Microsoft uh, for doing these kind of simple apps in the in the um, mobile world. So, so that's the um, that's all I have to say <laughs> about that. So, what I want to do, let's. I'd like to open up, uh, open this up for um, questions. Uh, so, if anybody has any um, questions that they want to. Uh, ask in the chat window, and I will. Um, I'll also open up the the mics here. So, if anybody has any uh, any questions that you want to ask, please um, please do so. How difficult is it to learn alpha? That's a good question. Um, I I have not learned alpha, but from from the videos I've seen, uh, and I'm trying to think. In, uh, hold on tight. I we um, I had a presentation by Dion at one point, and I'm trying to think if I. Uh, um, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of feedback, so, okay, uh, but let me see here. There was a, a presentation that we had uh, by uh, Dion from um, Alpha, and I was, I, I know we re I know it was recorded somewhere, but I don't. I don't see it right here. But um, if you if you take a look at um, Alpha Anywhere's website, there are some videos on how to how to do it. The the it's 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 relatively easy to get started. They they do have some uh, a bunch of plugins that you can add. But to really customize it, you really need to know JavaScript and HTML5. Um, but I have not gotten into it. Um, I, I'd like to get into it, I'm, but I'm just so busy with regular uh, access and uh, you know that that stuff that I haven't had a chance to to, to get into it yet. Um, but if um, if for those of you that are attending the um, uh, Pog presentation, I know Dion McCormick from Alpha Software is going to be there, and he's going to show uh, how people have done ha have done that. Um, and I'd encourage you to just to take a look at the um, uh, Access uh, Days Caribbean um, app that uh, you can download, like I said, from Google Play or from Windows Phone. It should be on um, iPhone soon in the next couple of days. It takes them a little bit longer to approve apps to show up in the store, uh, so it may be a little bit longer for that to happen. Um, so Tom asked a question, going back to first demo with SharePoint tables, how does this compare to ODBC connection to SQL Server or Azure in a data center? So it's, it, it's, it's almost identical to, I mean, it is a, a SQL Azure, uh, uh, but the, the difference is, is that you're, uh, instead of, you, 
putting it on a local SharePoint um, server at, at that company's location. You're housing it within Office 365 in the cloud. So uh, what that means is Microsoft's responsible for all the backups. Uh, they, uh, it's, it's redundant uh, in uh, multiple uh, areas. And I had the opportunity about two weeks ago, I went to a um, Microsoft MVP uh, conference um, and uh, I, I really enjoyed that out in Pennsylvania. And one of the one of the things that they uh, talked about was that when in um, when you create uh, a you know a SQL Azure database, they actually wherever it is in the in the U.S., it's in the opposite part of the of the U.S. Uh, for redundancy. So if you create something in Seattle, Washington, there's a um, a data center like in, let's say, in Florida, in the opposite part of the country. Um, so even if there were some wide, uh, you know, blackouts or something, anything like that, uh, you'd you'd still be able to access your information. So that's what that's for. Um, is it possible to create access reports from an access web app uh, from your mobile device? Uh, we gave a presentation on that because uh, if with, within your access database, there are no reports. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to move back over to uh, access for a second. Um, and so uh, in access, what, you know, under this, uh, you see we have tables and forms, and we have uh, queries um, and macros, but there are no reports. Um, because when you when you view a report in a web browser, um, you're you're it's more like a you're looking at our view, and if you print that web browser, you've got all the all the junk within the browser that also prints along with it. And so one of the things that we did in our um, and I demonstrated it in one of the other um, uh, 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 one of the other months of the Access Web Apps Group that we have, uh, the webinars. I, I give a presentation on what we've done with the Waterfall Calc app where we have a we have a button sitting on a form and all it does is it says email me this report and when the user clicks that button it stores uh, uh, in into a table that the user has requested a report and then we have a, a, um, a desktop database uh, sitting on um, my client's uh, uh, LAN, and it all it's doing is it's an access desktop database, and it's just got three or four reports in it, and it pulls seeking for anybody that says, oh, they request a report, and every 10 seconds, um, it will pull that, and if somebody had requested it, it automatically builds a report as a PDF, attaches it to an email, and sends it through SMTP um, over to the client. The, our, um, the, the banks don't actually know that it's not coming from the web app. Um, all they care is that it's showing up in their email. Uh, but that's one way that we uh, got around got around that um, situation. Good questions. Um, good. Yeah. No problem. So any. Uh, uh, any other questions that people have? It's about 8.18, so we got about 10 or 12 minutes left. Um, well, if you don't have any questions, one of the things that I want to kind of throw out there are, you know, um, in the past we've, we've talked about um, creating web apps from scratch. Uh, we've talked about, I, I gave to, uh, people a tour of the Waterfall Calc app and showed how I built that and some of the limitations that I ran to, into with macros and things like that. Um, but what other what other kinds of topics would you be um, interested in hearing about with um, Access Web Apps? Um, we talked a little bit about hybrid apps before, um, and um, uh, in the future, I, uh, you know, I've, I've asked um, Judy. Uh, and Kevin Bell to be guest speakers in the future because they've been they've been working with web apps as well, and they can kind of talk about some of the. Um, uh, in, uh, I know um, for Judy, she's going to be talking about uh, how uh, how she's built web apps and some of the um, some of her strategies and some of the um, some of the issues that she's run into in the past, uh, so that from her per 
her, her perspective, uh, you can kind of get a feel to, uh, into what other people have, have run into. Um, Kevin Bell, is a, um, he used to work at Microsoft on, uh, on the uh, Access team. He, um, he did a lot of testing uh, of Access. And um, since uh, he, he's been on his own, uh, he left Microsoft, I think, back in November. October, November time frame. Um, and so he's been doing, uh, he's been working on some, some different web apps on his own. And so I've, I've asked him to talk about, um, there, there's different, there's different um, ways to package an app. Uh, and packaging just means um, basically uh, creating a .app file uh, which is actually an XML file, but you can, uh, or a zip, I think it's a zip file that contains XML files. Um, but basically it's, it's a way for you to take an app, package it, and then you can uh, uh, upload that app to SharePoint. Uh, so there's, an, uh, there's a way, there's a deployment, a way to deploy things, there's a way to, um, you know, update, you know, apps, things like that. And so uh, sometime, uh, this summer, maybe July or August, he'll present. Uh, Judy's presenting in June, um, so. Um, but I'm very interested in finding out what what other kinds of things that you'd uh, like us to talk about. One of the things that I forgot to. Um, mentioned was I was going to talk about some of the newer features that were uh, in um, web apps. And uh, so just to kind of go over those, um, one of uh, one of the uh, recent features that they've um, added is the ability to uh, download um, data from a, like a, um, the data sheet view into um, whoops, uh, into uh, Excel. Um, so um, before it was kind of a pain to, to get the data um, for uh, end users to uh, get that data into Excel. But what I'll show you is, uh, let me jump back over to, X, uh, jump back over to my third monitor here. And so um, if you can see the, um, the browser here, what we have is we've got the list view and the data sheet view. And in the data sheet view, there's a, a button here that was, uh, I think it's been maybe six months now. But what this allows you to do is you just click on this button and it downloads the data to an Excel file, um, and so you can pull that up that data in Excel, and um, hold on tight because now I need to switch you over to uh, my second monitor. <laughs> that's the one. That's the one issue of of having all this. Uh, so um, in here you can see uh, now I've got, this is Excel, and it's kind of pretty. It's you know. Um, uh, one of the things I like is it's got a drop down um, automatically, but it's got the auto filter on, uh, so you can uh, select what you want to. But it, it's kind of it's just a, a pretty Excel file that down that um, that you can get from from that. Um, one of the other things that they did is they've increased the size of the macros. Uh, before the macros were limited to, I don't remember how many characters it was, but I mean 10,000 characters or something like that. But in our, in our case uh, with the waterfall calc um, system, we ran into a, uh, a lot of issues with that. And so in our case, we had to write 15 macros, one right after, a, after another, because we kept hitting the limitation of the macro size. Um, and so that that was one of the things that we we ran into, and they've uh, they've they've fixed they've since fixed that problem. Um, and then the other thing is that they um, they've added the ability to 
uh, email uh, other people in the, within the same domain from within the web app. And I'm not really thrilled about that feature because with the um, uh, with apps that I've worked with with clients, a lot of times they want to email their clients uh, from within the web app, not just people within their same company, but it's it's one step in that direction, uh, and that's um, a, a relatively new feature as well. If you go to um, the Office blog, uh, you'll see um, some uh, you know as they announce new features, uh, they're. Um, constantly adding uh, those features um, to um, yeah, let's see if we can jump into it. Uh, they're, they're, um, they're, whenever they announce a new feature, they do it on the on the Office blog. Um, and so, if you go to blogs.office.com/access, uh, just blogs.office.com/access, um, you'll see uh, you know. Uh, different postings there uh, from different people on the office team, or um, you know, uh, you know, there's access team, office team, uh, and uh, Jeff Conrad, um, who's also an author. He he posts things quite a bit there too, as well. Um, okay, so some comments. Uh, I see some real samples on using some of the macros. Okay, good. Yeah, we could definitely talk about macros uh, again. Um, is the transfer spreadsheet macro available in the Access Web App? Well, you don't need the the. We were um, we were in the Access Web App, and we did that down that little download. Um, icon is available in every data sheet view unless you want to turn it off. But that, that download uh, to spreadsheet is available in every data sheet view in every, um, if in any Access Web app that you create. So it's automatically there. Um, how about synchronizing web apps database with a desktop database? Um, the, that's kind of an interesting idea. A lot of times when people are using a um, a desktop database, it's automatically connected to a web apps database. But I've run into cases, which which is perfect for this, where people want to take their data with them. Um, like w when we're in Portland, we have very little uh, internet. The internet connection is, you know, fair to partly cloudy. It's mostly cloudy, um, and so you know, having that data with you is a huge plus. So that's something that we could definitely talk about is basically when you're connected via Wi-Fi or something, um, you know, or on a LAN, you download the the data locally and then do a, a sync, um, basically a synchronizing of that data. That's one of the cool things that um, Alpha Software has built into it automatically is that um, if you are connected to a SQL database, it, you can um, you can have a snapshot of that data on your phone that you take with you, and you can actually enter and edit data on your phone. And then when you're back to uh, having a signal or back to having um, you know uh, on Wi-Fi, it'll automatically synchronize the data that you put on your mobile device back to your SQL database. Your SQL is your database, so that's kind of cool. Um, no, there's currently no way to upload or download files of any kind. Um, yeah, I think I I, I think uh, Tom, you are. Right. Okay. Good. So yeah. So Tom, Tom's mentioning that there's no way to um, to upload or download files uh, through an Access Web App. Um, but uh, but again, if I um, and I think that that's one of the reasons why they uh, did what they um, what they did with. Um, hold on. Let me jump back over to. My web browser here. Um, 
I think that's one of the reasons that they did this uh, this button for downloading to Excel is because uh, you know especially you know, I, I met with a I, another client that I met with you know they're like well our executive team loves Excel all they use are Excel they've never used Access they you know. They always are constantly just asking for data in Excel, uh, and and so having this little download where they they can view the data in a web app and then hit you know download the data uh, for them to play around with it in Excel it gives them the capability of doing that. So great, good comments, uh, good comments. Well, good. Well, I appreciate um, everyone's input. I, um, I, your suggestions, I'll definitely take those to heart and uh, see about putting those on uh, some future um, sessions. And I think that uh, one of the things we could do is actually there, there's, there's some of these that we could actually combine into, um, instead of having one long session like we did today on one particular topic, is we may grab like four of the four or five of these uh, questions, and you know, just spend you know ten minutes on each one uh, to kind of do that as well. So, um, can you link tables in another database to a web app? In other words, the web app has link tables, and I don't know of any way that you can do that. I believe that you you really want to build the um, it first, uh, and then, you know, and then connect it that way. But I don't know of any way to do it the the other way. So, yeah, great. Well, very good. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys at, uh, attending as well. Um, and I'll go ahead and turn off the recording here. And I'll um, I'll make this recording available. It should be available uh, within the next couple days uh, to. Um, you know, to our uh, site again. And uh, again, if anybody has uh, any uh, questions and they need to get a hold of me, uh, feel free to, if you if you jump onto the um, Access Web App site uh, and you can, uh, you know, you can fill out, there's a form there I believe we'll, that will send to me, or you can uh, email me. Um, my email address is andy at worksmartdb.com. Uh, Andy at worksmartdb.com, um, DB like database. Uh, and um, that's it. I appreciate everyone. And uh, have a good night.